thank you, uh, organizers, uh, Professor Deepankar Hom and uh, Urbashi Sinha for having invited me to this wonderful meeting. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, non-Markovian uh, dephasing and depolarizing channels, work that I've done with uh, uh, Shrikant and uh, Shubhashish from IIT Jodhpur. So uh, in abstract, uh, I'll try to uh, indicate a general method for for constructing non-Markovian variants of uh, CP maps, particularly Pauli channels. And uh, we'll, in detail, we'll propose a one-parameter family of non-Markovian, but completely positive extension of the cu qubit dephasing channels. Uh, here, we'll identify non-Markovianity with the breakdown in CP divisibility. That's, I'm sure, familiar to uh, some of uh, the members of the audience. Uh, that's the appearance of a not completely uh, positive intermediate map. The curiosity in our approach lies in its relation to a level crossing feature that I'll talk about. So the non-Markovianity will be witnessed, uh, it can also be witnessed uh, by the trace distance method, though any other suitable distinguishability measure would also do. And uh, we point out uh, what uh, is probably interesting here that the non-Markovianity doesn't necessarily imply negative decoherence in the usual sense, and it seems to highlight the general difficulty in pinning down what exactly constitutes quantum uh, Markovianity, a concept that still remains debated and controversial. Now, a classical stochastic uh, process uh, is a Markov uh, process. Uh, if these conditional probabilities just depend on the previous time in the, in the, uh, you know, the discrete time uh, stochastic process. In other words, there's no memory of the dynamical history of the values of x. But now, if we restrict ourselves uh, to experiments where one can only access one point uh, probability vectors, then the, we can now uh, represent the stochastic evolution in terms of transition matrices connecting the initial and the, uh, you know, the final probability vectors. Uh, and the T should have suitable renormalization and positivity properties. Now, for Markovian processes, such stochastic uh, matrices will compose according uh, to the rule where uh, you know, I transition from I to K, I have these transition matrices, I can sum over this intermediate index, and uh, for any say, in this, in this sense, Markovian uh, process is said to be divisible. A non-Markovian process is not necessarily divisible uh, because, uh, in general, these intermediate matrices may not be uh, well-defined. Now, you can, of course, construct by force such an intermediate uh, matrix by uh, you know, taking the evolution from uh, 0 to k, and then again, you have the evolution from 0 to uh, uh, j, and I can take this inverse and uh, construct it uh, in this uh, fashion, but uh, the matrix con constructed in this way may not be positive. Now, some, also some non-Markovian processes may be divisible, uh, even though one can formally write down the transition matrices as if they arise from uh, Markov processes. So if you're just dealing with one point probabilities, in some sense, in an effective way, we may treat divisibility and Markovianity as the same. But in truth, the complete uh, hierarchy of the time conditional probabilities would be needed to decide whether a process is Markovian or otherwise. Also, uh, there is the distinguishability uh, criterion that uh, you know, given any two probability distributions that are sampled, you know, P1 and P2 sampled with probabilities Q and one minus Q, I can write down uh, this uh, vector and uh, the L1 norm of it, uh, which is L1 norm being defined this way, uh, tells me what's the probability, uh, the minimum probability of failure, uh, you know, in a one-shot uh, measurement. And uh, uh, an established a theorem in uh, classical stochastic processes says that say that uh, matrices, uh, these transition uh, matrices, a family of such matrices. Uh, you know, constitute are divisible if and only if the L norm, L1 norm of any such vector is non-increasing, uh, you know, when subjected to uh, this uh, process. So applied to this uh, uh, Wx vector that we've constructed, this theorem means that a stochastic process is, uh, is divisible if and only if the distinguishability of two distributions is non-increasing under the process. Now, when we come to uh, quantum non-Markovianity, uh, it's not straightforward to do it because uh, the, such a conditional probability, uh, you know, in order to condition it on, you de require measurements, and when you intervene with measurements because of non-commutativity, in general, you'll affect the future uh, 
you know, probability distribution and uh, as a result, it's not clear uh, that this idea can be translated. Uh, maybe what this uh, basically says is that there's no unique context independent definition of what quantum, non, uh, what quantum Markovianity is, but here we'll use a definition that's been around for a while, uh, which is uh, to look at the divisibility or the distinguishability criterion and, uh, uh, and because in that form, they don't need to refer to measurements, but just dynamical maps. And uh, of course, uh, in the quantum case, even these two definitions are no longer equivalent. Uh, in particular, one can show that, uh, you know, Markovian in the sense of divisibility implies Markovian in the sense of distinguishability, but not vice versa. So Markovianity, therefore, by the definition that we assume, uh, will be defined uh, by CP divisibility and uh, time evolution that's characterized by linear trace-preserving maps of this type and which compose in this form will be called uh, Markovian in this particular definition. So under non-Markovian evolution, you, you can have an intermediate map uh, which uh, may be uh, non-completely, not completely positive and uh, that would indicate, uh, basically we know that uh, these um, NCP maps arise when you have uh, initial correlations in the system. So such an NCP intermediate map would indicate correlations that have arisen between the system and the environment. And uh, again, uh, one can uh, write down the lower bound on the probability for discriminating two states, row one and row two, in a one-shot uh, POVM, uh, where uh, delta is, again, we have two density operators that we want to distinguish in one shot, sampled with probability uh, Q and one minus Q. This is the Hellstrom matrix, and uh, one can uh, uh, write down a probability this way. And again, uh, this is known. Uh, that under the CP divisible map, which we will identify with Markovian processes by our definition that the definition we adopt is non-decreasing. So thus, a decrease in uh, P fail, right, uh, for some time would indicate non-Markovianity. And underlying memory in the process about the system's initial state are sometimes what's called information backflow from the environment into the system. However, again, there may be CP indivisible processes that don't enhance distinguishability. That's the inequivalence of the two definitions that I said, the distinguishability and the divisibility definitions. And uh, as is uh, known to this audience and uh, should have been clear by previous talks given in this session, the CP divisible uh, map in the differential form is written by the GKSL uh, uh, equation, which generalizes the Lindblad equation to a uh, time uh, local form. Now, the idea is to construct non-Markovian versions of uh, familiar Markovian maps. And uh, one can look at, for example, uh, density operator evolving according to a Markovian channel, which is the familiar uh, phase operator, which mixes uh, a density operator with an IE identity and a Z channel. So what we want to do is to modify uh, them so that we introduce new Krause operators, Ki and Kz respectively, that will uh, reproduce the non-Markovian behavior and uh, with evolution following this and the completeness relations given by this. Now, a very natural place to do this sort of exercise is to start from a dephasing master equation. Uh, this can be easily integrated and one can write down this probability uh, to have this form. And uh, it can also be shown that various witnessings of non-Markovianity based on fidelity or quantum relative entropy, entanglement, quantum mutual information, etc., all correspond to gamma being less than uh, zero, sort of a negative, uh, you know, decay rate. Now, this uh, uh, dp by dt that appears here is equal to this quantity. So when gamma is less than zero, it also implies a reduction in p, and it's intu intuitively clear, right? Because you're saying that it reduces the phase noise that's been acting on the system. So indeed, negative decay rates have been proposed as a basis for quant quantifying non-Markovianity. Non but equally well, one may consider that D, dp by dt uh, does not actually, uh, you know, it can remain positive and that non-Markovianity could arise from p exceeding the value half, you know, resulting in an unmixing, uh, which is like backflow, except uh, up to a unitary. But it's not possible from the other one because it's, it's designed so that it uh, reaches the value of half maximum. But our approach will illustrate uh, the intuition behind this idea. So uh, we basically create a toy noise, if you like, and uh, we start off from an ansatz, which is like this. So we take the Krause operators of the dephasing channel and add a term factors of this sort. 
and uh, the completeness condition implies this uh, condition on this from which we obtain this equation and plugging this back, uh, these would be uh, the Crow's operators uh, that we have. Uh, we will restrict to uh, positive alpha uh, and uh, T must then satisfy, uh, one can look at the experiment the form there and one finds that for CP maps. So we essentially want to look for non-Markovianity in CP maps and uh, for CP maps. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you violate this, you essentially have uh, the map becomes uh, NCP and uh, you can uh, slightly modify your Crow's operator and you'd have a sum difference rather than a, you know, a, a operator sum, you'll have an operator sum difference representation of the noise, which is the telltale uh, signature of uh, uh, NCP, if you like, uh, representation. So here we will choose alpha to be in the value which is zero to one and uh, P will go from uh, P uh, to half, uh, ensuring that uh, the modified dephasing that we propose remains completely positive. Now the intermediate map uh, that we take can again be constructed. Uh, so you have uh, uh, the system evolving from time zero to F and then to T, and uh, I can construct the intermediate map uh, in this fashion, uh, provided uh, the evolution from F to zero is, I mean zero to S is invertible. And it can be computed uh, directly by matrix inversion using uh, a work that's been done uh, 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 using the dynamical uh, uh, map. Uh, here what we will do is uh, we will derive it by vectorizing the density operator and representing the super operator as the corresponding matrix operation and uh, use this particular vector identity. Then the intermediate map, uh, ma map is derived uh, by matrix inversion and applied to the vectorized version of this. And uh, devectorizing this will give us the Choi matrix of the intermediate uh, map following the technique uh, proposed here. And uh, so we obtain this as the uh, Choi matrix. That is, uh, we have this maximally entangled state uh, barring the normalization to which uh, we apply the, uh, this intermediate map uh, to one of the particles. So by the choi Yolkovsky isomorphism, we know that uh, a matrix, uh, this Choi matrix uh, is positive if and only if uh, the evolution here is completely positive. So for com completeness, I just indicate this detail. So what we do is uh, we can, uh, so this is the actual cross operator that uh, uh, we have, this one minus P in this operation. And uh, so this is the entire thing vectorized uh, form that uh, we write here. So we take the density operator and write it as a vector and uh, mention using the identities that we mentioned there, one can do this and just include it for detail. Now, uh, in the end uh, of uh, the uh, calculation, what we find is uh, it has this essentially simple form, uh, the, the Choi matrix for the uh, intermediate map uh, where uh, alpha plus minus are these uh, quantities and the non-vanishing eigenvalues uh, for this are these uh, quantities, which is a surprisingly and pleasantly uh, simple form. And from this one can, for example, uh, see, so, uh, so alpha plus and minus are these points and uh, P and Q. So we need to take an intermediate map. So the upper limit time limit of this would be P and the lower limit of, would be, of this would be Q. So if we choose Q, for example, to be smaller than alpha uh, minus and let P to vary from Q to half, then when P attains this value, so if you look at this guy, this will remain positive, but as P approaches alpha minus, this quantity uh, becomes uh, zero. So when P is equal to Q, as you can see, lambda plus will be two because this will be one plus one and uh, lambda minus will be zero. And as you increase P going from, uh, 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 you know, larger than Q, uh, then lambda plus will keep uh, reducing. And at the point where uh, P is equal to uh, alpha minus, this quantity becomes zero and you have a level crossing. So that happens at the value uh, alpha minus. And I, I want to say that uh, in this toy noise, you will find that there's a lot of uh, the non-Markovianity in some sense, that's the threshold of uh, non-Markovianity. Uh, yeah, on the other hand, uh, if Q is, uh, taken to be larger than this crossover point that I talked about, uh, then uh, so 
this would be negative and because p is cho chosen to be a time instant that's larger than q this would also be negative this quantity uh, would be positive so this would continue to be uh, so lambda minus would start from zero and go on into negative values and lambda plus would start from two and go into values that are larger than two such that the sum of the eigenvalues is equal to two but uh, with this choice uh, anyway so these are the uh, plots that you see in this case the eigenvalue, uh, the one that's chosen, uh, uh, lambda plus, starts from this and comes here, and they meet exactly at this point, which is uh, alpha uh, minus. And um, so the, they cross over at the point where P, the, so I've chosen this intermediate time interval uh, with Q, and P, when P reaches this uh, crossover point, uh, so that's the point where they cross over, and one can also find that that's the point where the full channel becomes maximally dephasing. Uh, the particular values that we have chosen here are this. On the other hand, if we choose Q to be larger than the value, uh, that is to say the smaller time limit of the intermediate, uh, 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 the time that we have chosen, if we choose that to be smaller than alpha minus, I mean larger than alpha minus, uh, then, uh, so this is one of the eigenvalues, you, they, this always remains uh, negative. So, uh, so that's the whole range of P demonstrates uh, an intermediate uh, range uh, in which you have an NCP map which implies uh, non-Markovianity according to the definition uh, of uh, NCP-ness that uh, we have basically chosen. Now, we can witness non-Markovianity uh, in this approach uh, by a host of measures such as trace distance, fidelity, quantum relative entropy, quantum Fisher information, various capacitance measures, Etc. as well as correlation measures such as mutual information, entanglement, and discord, all of which are non-increasing under CP divisible maps. So, so any, uh, uh, therefore that would be the uh, way to detect uh, uh, non-Markovianity in these methods. So here we will consider uh, the evolution of trace distance uh, by the BLP measure that was proposed in this paper. Applied to a, we can just uh, consider these two uh, states to begin with and uh, one can directly uh, easily compute the trace distance which has this value. So this quadratic form immediately shows as P uh, increases and uh, reaches this uh, point uh, which is alpha minus, you have a minimum and then uh, you know it arises again as you go past it. And so uh, we've just given a log plot in order to highlight this. So we have trace distance uh, which uh, becomes lower as you increase p the decoherence parameter at alpha minus uh, when at that at that point uh, they uh, become zero and then there is a rising up again which is the signature of recur recurrence if you like so the log plot of this and uh, now uh, yeah a, 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 a non markovian witness based on fidelity with the original state may not spot this because what has really happened here is that uh, you reach a point of maximal uh, phase mixing after which the Z channel starts uh, dominating. Uh, therefore, if you just look for a fidelity measure uh, in terms of whether fidelity with the original state uh, has been enhanced, then I guess that uh, would not be detected in this. On the other hand, if you have a pair of states, uh, you would indeed find that beyond the point alpha minus, they become more, uh, 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 I mean, more distinguishable. So this TD enhancement witnesses uh, non community it's a kind of experiment one could do. And also note that uh, the larger is the value of alpha, uh, so as we increase, this is, uh, uh, yeah, alpha, this is 0 0.5, so this is the non-Markovian, uh, this is the Markovian value, which, uh, you know, throughout the entire regime, it, it keeps falling. So in the, uh, when you have alpha 0 0.5, you have this curve, and when you have alpha is 0 0.9, you have this curve, so you see a larger, uh, area that's covered under this. So this suggests that one could use a BLP-like measure, for example, to detect the non-Markovianity in this process. Uh, so uh, the point that I was earlier telling uh, is that uh, in this case, uh, so the P at no point does P actually, uh, you know, reverse its sign. It doesn't become smaller. Instead, P keeps increasing, but it keeps increasing and going beyond half. Uh, so for example, if I have the Markovian uh, value, it uh, reaches the value half uh, uh, at this uh, time. So we parameterized time, uh, P as a kind of a, the decoherence parameter serves like time. So we see that in the Markovian case, it reaches up to P. But uh, in the case of these non-Markovian 
so this curve for example corresponds to alpha is equal to 0 0.3 and this corresponds to alpha is equal to 0 0.5 it reaches the value of 0 0.5 that is the maximal dephasing uh, earlier and then keeps increasing uh, such that the there is a dominance of a single channel like so you you can think of dephasing as a mixing of the i and z channels so it's like it reaches a point of at alpha minus it reaches a point where there's maximal dephasing and beyond that the z channel starts dominating and that in some sense is uh, the the reason that distinguishability increases because the initial states that you have it's like uh, largely only the z operation has uh, been applied this non markovianity arises from subsequent uh, dominance of the unitary uh, channel rather than uh, negative uh, decay rate that is uh, in the sense of a reduction in uh, p so to summarize what we've done, the method that we've used to construct non-Markovian uh, sort of a toy channel, variance of the dephasing channel can be straightforwardly extended to other Pauli channels, for example, the bit flip or the depolarizing channels. Uh, since we define non-Markovianity by the breakdown in CP divisibility of a dynamical map, uh, this is demonstrated by the appearance of the NCP intermediate map. Uh, details such as the level crossing feature of the eigenvalues of the intermediate map may vary from case to case but uh, they may present uh, new insights despite the contrived nature of the channel that we've chosen. Also, uh, the relationship between different definitions of non-Markovianity, example, uh, div divisibility versus distinguishability, etc., may be uh, studied in such constructed non-Markovian uh, variants. And uh, so non-Markovianity, uh, one of the lessons that seem to appear is that it doesn't necessarily imply negative uh, decoherence in the usual sense. So toy noise uh, non-Markovianity is picked up by certain witnesses or measures, but not others, indicating, again, the intrinsic difficulty in defining what uh, we mean by quantum uh, Markovianity. So thank you.